A reporter asked me about magnesium flakes and how it's different than Epsom salt baths. I decided I would make a video to talk about this as well as magnesium in a little bit more broader sense. So let's talk about it. Magnesium is a well-known, commonly used supplement. I have seen it bring benefits for things such as just overall calming purposes, and it can lower blood pressure, it can help with headaches, I've seen it reduce ticks, I've seen it help people sleep better, reduce ADD symptoms, decrease anxiety, it can even stop premature labor when it's done properly, sometimes intravenously in hospitals as well. So this is a really, really remarkable calming mineral. And... Uh, I use it very frequently in the practice. It also can be used as a stool softener when taken orally. Now, that also means that if a person does take it by mouth, if they take too much, there's a pretty good chance that they will get diarrhea. So when it is used by mouth, we do recommend taking it at a small amount and working up slowly, but you can't really overdose on oral magnesium or if you bathe in it for that matter, because not enough will get into your body before you start seeing those effects of it coming out the back end. Now, relative to what this reporter was asking me about, so magnesium flakes are a salt, but it's magnesium chloride, okay? Epsom salts is magnesium sulfate, so they are both salts. They both kind of like have a, a heart, you know, a, a flaky or in the case of a salt-like substance to it, and they both can be dissolved into baths. Typically, two cups of, of either of these salts um, in water as hot as possible. The heat opens up the pores, and as much of the skin that is submerged as possible, it gets in through the skin, so the better the dose. And soaking for about 10 minutes, that's usually what we um, aim to get to go for. Now, as far as the actual temperature itself, of course, we want to make sure that it is not something that would burn the skin. So in general, we talk about for younger kids under the age of 10, for either of these salts, it's actually where you would bathe for, you want the temperature to not be for younger kids above 100.4. And for adults and adolescents, older kids, etc., you want it to not be more than 104 degrees. But more than that, you can start to get into some issues with it. That's plenty of temperature and, and heat in order to open up those pores. And, to, and also it opens the capillary beds in the skin. And that's where the absorption into the bloodstream takes place. Now, Epsom salt is different in, the, in, that, it's, in that the sulfate, so magnesium sulfate, magnesium chloride. The thing about Epsom salts, though, is that the sulfate is also a very beautiful anti-inflammatory substance. And in fact, glutathione, which you've heard me talk about before, which is the body's most important naturally made detoxifier, antioxidant, reducer of free radical damage, um, it, um, that's what the sulfate is made and turned into that. So the real difference between the two that I see is that you get the extra bonus of having that detoxifying property. Now, there are people, and usually it's the people who are promoting magnesium flakes, that, and I commonly see it says that magnesium flakes, the magnesium chloride, is better absorbed than magnesium sulfate Epsom salt. I did a pretty extensive literature review before I did, while I was preparing for this, I couldn't find any data that actually shows that to be true. So what does that mean? Well, they're both safe. I would suggest if you're not sure which one would be better for you or for your child, do each bath bathing once a night for one week straight. And then if you want, switch over to the other one. See if you notice that there's a clinical difference. Some of the tests that I do on the urine organic acid test, for instance, we want the sulfate there because actually it actually detoxifies for, um, and there's some toxins that we may actually see coming out of that. And that's why we say to, ba to bathe for a week before you decide for that, whether it will work. But certainly either one of them can be tried um, and either one can be helpful. Now on the oral side of things, okay, and sometimes you do need to use oral forms to, to handle some of these um, um, more significant neurological things like ticks, like muscle spasms, et cetera, headaches, my, um, tension headaches. Um, the main thing to know about it is that some forms of magnesium taken by mouth, such as the citrate form, magnesium citrate, and magnesium sulfate, the same Epsom salts, those are the kinds that are most likely to cause loose stools. But there are other forms of magnesium in particular, in particular magnesium glycinate 
and magnesium malate, which seems to have the least impact on the gut. So you can usually give higher doses of them if necessary without causing the GI issues. But no matter what you do, if you're going to go orally, of course, it would make sense to start off with a low dose, gradually work up the dose. Of course, if you start seeing stools that are too soft for tolerable, then we've gone too far with that. We should look maybe to another source. So anyways, hope you now know more about magnesium. Um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please hit us up on our Patreon. Um, become a subscriber there so you can help support our work that we're doing here. Share this information with anybody. Maybe you know somebody who is, is in a stress situation, has muscle spasms, muscle aches, etc. A beautiful thing to do. Wonderful for sleep. So, uh, you know, share this information with people. Maybe it'll help them out. Have a great day. You like what you saw? Watch another one. Click right here.